Hanging on the wall is a large map. Describe it to me meticulously. It is represented as a map of the entire world, but actually it is missing entire continents, including North America. Seems antique. If it's missing the more recently discovered continents, it could be traced back to the time of the ancient Romans. Are there any decorations? No, nothing specific. This doesn't add up. Normally maps like that always display a symbol, the wind rose. It should be there. What if it was removed for some reason? I think we should follow this lead since we have nothing better. Look for anything that might refer to the wind rose. There's a safe in the room. From the look of it, I'd say it's going to be a tough nut to crack. Can you read its model? Let's see. Secure Master Core 2.5. Bad news. I am browsing a blog of professional safe crackers, and it seems nobody has yet found a way to open that specific model. Or, at least, a way that does not involve using an abundance of dynamite or liquid hydrogen. Sorry, is a blog of professional safe crackers really a thing? You'd be surprised what circulates on the deep web. Anyway, it seems clear the only way to open this safe is to find the right combination. I don't think the doctor would play so dirty that he wouldn't provide me with all the necessary information to face his challenge. The combination must be somewhere in here. I was sure that trying random combinations wouldn't do any good. Wait a second, Alice. When the doctor suggested I have the solution in my pocket, maybe it, it wasn't just an expression. The chest note I found along with Catherine and Radwed's photo. It must mean something, and, and maybe it's even linked to the riddle hidden in this room. It seems plausible. Describe the note to me. There are some chest diagrams, a few colored in red and others in green. Hmm. The combination of color and chess could be a movement suggestion. You know how it works, right? Chess? It always seemed to me a pastime for manic obsessives. You don't know how wrong you are. Ask if you need instructions. On one side of the note, there's also a windrose. That could be a reference to the map in the cabin, couldn't it? At this point, I'd be surprised if it were otherwise. Okay, let's get to work. I have to find something to help me with the map, but what? Earth calling Lars! We agreed that you'd search for something that refers to the wind- Oh, uh, yeah. I thought it was better to look for an- Try to find something that relates to the Windrose. Anything at all. Hmm, let's see. A few incomprehensible projects, an incomprehensible sort of logbook, a completely incomprehensible stack of papers. Then we have playing cards, a few chips, nuts, and a drink. Hmm, somebody went buck wild in here. Come on, Lars. Don't waste time. Wait a minute. Here it is. A magnet with the windrows engraved on it. This is confirmation that we're on the right track. Okay. I have the windrows. Now what do I do? Let me check. Maybe on the deep web there's also a nice blog for code breakers of old Roman maps where a windrose is missing. Okay. I found a website that seems reliable. If the map is a reference to the ancient Romans, there's only one spot where that magnet should be placed. Rome, obviously. Wrong. Apparently the Romans were convinced that the origin of the winds wasn't in Rome, but an unspecified point in the Ionian Sea. Copy that. It's make or break time.
What was that metallic clank? That, my dear, was the sweet sound of success. Safe is open. That means its mechanism was just a smokescreen. Very ingenious. But why did the doctor give me suggestions on how to solve the riddle of the Seat Lalique? Maybe he was feeding the challenge by giving you some hints. <sighs> I hope next time he sends a few pistachios instead. I love pistachios. Alice, hear your steps in the hallway. Do something, hurry! Uh, it, it's not what it looks like. Uh, uh, uh. Lars? Lars! Suck on that, Doctor. What's happening? Are you okay? I gained some precious seconds, but I've got to move. The safe contained mostly paperwork, bearer bonds, property records, and notarial deeds. But something else caught my attention. It was a small obsidian item that partially reflected my image. Huh. All that fuss just to hide a little mirror. And yet, I immediately understood that this wasn't an ordinary mirror. I could sense its power running through my veins. It was like... Like holding something alive. Lars! Lars! Pull yourself together, Lars! You said you have to move, and instead you've been gopping there for two minutes now! Two minutes? Damn! This little thing hypnotized me. I'm hanging up. We'll catch up when I'm back. Do get in touch! Go, go! After my incursion aboard the Seat Lalique, I knew I should expect another private visit. This time, without any possibility of a rain check. I wasn't wrong. The same individual that approached me a few hours earlier had returned, and this time he wouldn't go away with just some simple chatter. Besides, at that point, I was tired of talking as well. You have nowhere to go! Are you... sure about that? Hey, hey, freshwater sailor! Open your eyes, come on, I haven't got all day! Who? What? Rise and shine, little princess. So, it all happened for real, and I'm still alive. Or are we both dead and this is heaven? The sight is like I imagined it to be. Now, if we're finished with the small talk, let's get to it. I have a Slavic witness rambling in an unintelligible language about two men beating each other up on a public bridge in the middle of the night. I am forced to deduce by the circumstances that one of the two men was you. It was a true and proper solo man. I was riding around on my green dart when all of a sudden... Don't bullshit me, Bundy. I know very well what you're doing. If I let you do what you want, it's only because of the respect that I feel for you. But you went too far tonight. You're not the first one to tell me that. But I'll be the last. I took your badge back, and this time I'll lock it up so tight that even a funambulist trick won't be enough to get it back. The Mulsberg case is hiding more than it seemed in the beginning. I can agree with you on that. 
but your methods make me blow a gasket. You have concealed evidence from the authorities. You scared potential witnesses to death. You alarmed our main suspect. And on top of that, you dragged Miss Sharp down with you. Alice has nothing to do with this mess. She didn't even know I was acting alone. It's too late now for melodramatic scenes. Alice Sharp was suspended from her already precarious duties, and for that she'll have to thank a man who could have helped make her career. Goodbye, Bundy. In the end, you really disappointed me. It was a tough blow. I had nothing to lose in that whole story, and I jumped headlong into it. But Alice... I destroyed a dream nurtured for years, and was just started to materialize. I felt like a worm. Going home to rest on a real bed seemed like the best idea in the world at the moment. I'd think about the rest later. Lars! Oh, you scared the shit out of me. Wait, how'd you get in my flat? By the door. You're not used to locking the door when you leave, are you? I know this might seem like a maniacal habit, but the key to this door is somewhere in the city sewers. Alice, I... I guess I owe you an apology. I agree, you do. Or else you could get me out of the situation you've gotten me into rather than wasting your time feeling sorry for yourself. We just have to give it a little time. Then I'll talk to Burton. I'm sure he'll be willing to give you another chance. You have to face the truth. Burton wants nothing more to do with you, me, or what we have done. Let's admit it. We acted on impulse, sought glory on our own, and do you know what happens now? What happens is that you'll go your way, and I'll go mine. And maybe we'll catch up once a year to wish each other Merry Christmas with a phone call full of silence and embarrassment. What happens is that we roll up our sleeves, and we really do find the glory on our own. You'll find a good workplace, despite everything. Maybe not in law enforcement as you hoped. Maybe as a waitress or a cleaning lady. But you'll manage to move on somehow. Lars? Did you hear what I just said? Then kids will come, sweet innocent children that will instill in you a new hope for the future. Wait a minute, what? Are you serious? Never been more serious. We got so close, Lars. I heard what happened tonight. If Rodwed came for you in person, it's because deep down he considers you a real threat. Did you know I was able to beat him like an omelet against the mailboxes out here? Did it happen before or after he threw you out of the building? There's something wrong with that man. First of all, he lifted me off the ground with one hand like I was a six-year-old child. Furthermore, and you probably won't believe this, but I saw him. Yes, I mean, I saw him age at least 30 years right before my eyes. In just a few seconds. No snarky comments? Is that a positive or negative sign? Having reached this stage, I am ready to accept pretty much anything. Except aliens. Don't you dare propose any theories about aliens. Yeah, only that lunatic from Weird Cases believes in aliens. Anyhow, how do you explain such a phenomenon? This individual, and also the doctor, they seem to share a certain taste for theatrics. Could it just be a trick? An illusion? After all, it was dark. I can't rule it out for sure. But couldn't you do some research about it anyway? There was no need to ask. What will you do in the meantime? By now you've exhausted all your valid leads. I should find out what that strange obsidian item was that I found on board the seat Lanique. But during the struggle tonight, I saw something drop down the hole in the floor out here. And I'm pretty sure it was Radwed's smartphone. I'd say that's the top priority. Then I'll wait for your progress. From now on, we'll use your house as our headquarters. Fine by me. Don't expect me to clean it, though. I was all out of idea. Now it was within my reach. And there was the little object I had glimpsed the night before. Radwed's smartphone, finally in my hand. Radwed's cell phone, lost during our struggle. I wasn't competent enough to pull any precious information out of it. Hey. How's it going? There's a matter we need to clarify before the story ends. Your luck. You still haven't given up on that. Absolutely. Listen to this. 
You said you study behavioral science and that you specialize in the facial analysis of people. Now, in my opinion, that's a tough task comparable to poker. In addition, the eyes are the mirror of the soul. So you created your secret weapon, a tuft of hair that partially covered your own eyes, so you could spy on others without being seen. A bit like wearing sunglasses to look at girls' bums without being called a pervert. The white dye, then, is just a way to divert attention away from the real purpose of the lock. I never thought I could use my lock in such a way. Your idea is brilliant. So, it's not that either. Ah, oh, man, I'm starting to feel frustrated. Are you ready to throw in the towel? All right, all right, I officially declare my surrender. I already mentioned that my father was a great detective before his retirement, but I never specified who he worked for. Mr. Richard Kelvin Sharp, my grandfather. The owner of Spy Corps I, the biggest private detective agency in the Eastern United States. Bukatini Smanakati. You might think this would be an advantage for a girl that dreamed of nothing else besides becoming a detective. Instead, my grandfather was a man of old convictions, son of a patriarchal model that he never thought for a moment to call into question. So he denied me a job. You were rejected by your grandpa? Can you believe that? There was a huge fight. Cursed him and his agency to hell while he threatened to cut me out of the family inheritance in order to dissuade me. So I left, knowing that if I gave up, my grandfather would have won. But he failed. That's how you ended up here, doing an internship for old Seamus. That's the reason for my white lock. It's my war declaration. It reminds me of the rejection of my grandfather, my own blood, and this pushes me every day not to give up. Disappointed by the reality? Not at all. I thought you were going to catch me off guard with something simple like, because I love myself like this, or I copied my look from a superhero. Well, yes, I love myself like this too. I suppose I didn't manage to solve the mystery completely, but... There is one thing I'm sure of. What is it? Your grandfather was wrong. Thanks, Lars. I'm happy we talked about it. I recovered the package. Tell me you were spot on and that we have Radwed's phone. You better believe it. Seriously? So taking all those blows was worth it. Taking all those blows? Since when did you start speaking like a bar brawler? Since I've been hanging out with you. Give me the device, quick. Can you get anything from it? Uh, useful information that will get us closer to Catherine? I can and I will. Let me work. I just have to open the tracking software. Well, let's be clear though, he took the most of the beating. Okay, I'll launch the tracking program. Now I'll connect the smartphone to the laptop and wait for the readout of the results. So now we will be able to track the calls made with this device? We should be, but the tracker wasn't able to find enough data from the phone. I guess it's shielded. Darn. Do you see the area that appeared on the map? It indicates the place where Rodwed's phone seems to have been used lately. Oh, too vast to identify the precise spot. Tell me you still have one more trick up your sleeve or I'll start crying. I could... I could try to monitor the incoming signals received in the last few days. If we can obtain at least three readings, we could triangulate the signal's directions and find the location where Rod Wed was at the time of the calls. Here's the first signal. Judging by the reference radio tower, the call must have originated from the old factory building. Mama did mention she had called Radwed, now that I think about it. And here's another signal, this time closer to the coast. Any ideas? Probably the harbor office contacting Radwed after accepting his bribe. Maybe to clarify a few details about that night. It all fits. And I guess I have access to a third signal. One minute and... Oh no, that's not good. Yeah, the fact that the icon is sizzling and dancing all around is not a good sign, is it? Not at all. The signal comes from a radio tower near the Molesburg mansion, but the results are disturbed. I guess they installed some kind of shielding device specifically to prevent being tracked. All right, I'm on it. Just tell me what I have to do. Take this device, for starters. 
Once you get to the Molesburg residence, use it to track the source of the disturbance. What should I look for exactly? A telephone jammer. That is to say, a little device equipped with antennas. When you find it, put this tracker on top. It is also programmed to deactivate the jamming device. Once it is taken out of the equation, come back to me and I'm sure we'll get something. No sooner said than done. I'll be back here in no time. The signal didn't point exactly towards the house, but to the garden. I had to figure out where they stuck this jam, jum, ju, ju uh, you know, the radio thingy. I was able to cross the garden without being noticed by anyone, following the signal up to the gardener's shed. I found the device behind one of those stacked crates. Following Alice's instructions, I put the device I had with me on top of it. Then Alice would be able to... Did I really need to do that, Mama dear? Sure you did, idiot. Didn't you see that bunch of fleas was going to bite my hindquarters? If you say so, Mama. Don't hold a grudge on me now. We followed that shorty this far, but where did he go? Come out of there, Stallone! Not in the garbage, you idiot! He must be in the shed. Now be quiet and let's wait for him to come out. Trapped again. Mama and Eugene didn't want to drop the ball. To get out of that shed, I would have to devise one of my genius ideas, and fast. I picked up a handful. Flea bitten, creased, beaten up, old, smelly. The only adjective that didn't. I'd have picked up the sprayer if it didn't contain a strange and. I don't know why. That fridge was emptier than mine. I just found a hotting pot that could be useful. I thought it was better to look for another solution. It was a. Gropus. Why not? The toilet could have been useful, but it was secured with screws. Maybe? The toilet seat was up. That was enough to know that no woman had been there for months. I could have used the crates to barricade the shed, but sooner or later Eugene would manage to enter all the same. Then I saw the opening above the door, and my brain cells started to activate. I could build a ladder using what I found in the shed, and the box seemed like something I should remember. But for the base, I need something more solid. There was nothing else you... I thought it was better to look for Pebbles and dust. Flea bitten, the only the toilet could have been Hmm. It was one of those extendable clothes. I thought it was better to look for another. I thought it was better to look Sometimes, my ob No matter how hard I try, the toilet seat was up. That was enough. I could have used the crates to barricade the shed, but sooner or later Eugene would manage to enter all the same. Then I saw the opening above the door, and my brain cells started to activate. I could build a ladder using what I found in the shed, and the box seemed like something I should remember. But for the base, I need something more solid. 